powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. And I'm Dennis Bragg. After only two days of measurable precipitation in nearly 11 weeks in most of western Montana, a much needed weather pattern change is finally heading our way. Meteorologist Russ Thomas explores the impact that this is going to have on our ongoing wildfires. With more than 1.3 million acres scorched this summer, 2017 is now the second worst fire season on record in the northern Rockies region, surpassed only by the summer of 2012. Now, two much needed wet, cool weather systems are targeting Montana over the next week. It won't completely clear the smoke, but it's a start. We won't be ending our fire season with these events. It will be slowing it down, but there's just so much fire in the landscape across the region. And many of, many of the fires are in heavy timber and the fuels are so dry because of our summer drought. History shows that mid to late September is when we often begin to see a seasonal change in the weather pattern. The extended forecast shows a trend to cooler, wetter conditions over the next two weeks. This is good news as each system may not cover all areas, but the more opportunities we have, the better. Unfortunately, the first system looks like, looks like it's going to miss out for northwest Montana and north Idaho, where we do have some very active fires. But there, the models are showing an, an even stronger wetter system coming in directly from the west. And that will really help uh, North Idaho and Western Montana, Northwest Montana particularly. The expected cooler temperatures are helpful and the rainfall is certainly very beneficial, but there is one extra factor that would trump it all. The second system next week, we could actually see widespread areas of snowpack developing uh, into next week over the mountains uh, throughout Western Montana. More good news, the dry periods in between our rain events won't be as problematic as what we've had in recent weeks. The days will be so much cooler the night's longer and so our burning periods each day will be a lot shorter and less intense. A sure sign that the worst of the fire season is officially behind us. In Missoula, Russ Thomas, MTN News. Richmond says snow levels should be as low as 5,500 feet in most areas, 4,500 feet in the West Glacier region with the system expected to move through early next week. So for more on what we can expect as we get through this week, we toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Aaron Yost. Aaron. Exactly. And first things first, we're going to talk about the system this Thursday and Friday uh, that could have those snow levels down to about 6,000 feet. Boy, it could not come at a better time. Well, it could have come a little bit sooner, but it couldn't have come at a better time. I think a lot of us just over this. Hamilton today, first security bank ICAM. You can see right now a couple of smoke plumes actually being picked up on the radar across some of western Montana. We've got our high pressure ridge starting to squash out, kind of break down, and that's going to continue over the next couple of days before our big system arrives for Thursday and Friday. Currently in the Gulf of Alaska, we do have our first round of winter storm watches out as well. Got all those details coming up. There's nothing you can do about the epic depressive fire smoke that's played Western Montana this summer, short of stopping the wildfires themselves. But the horrible conditions of recent weeks may lead to changes in the way we're being warned about the dangers of breathing all that smoke. Not only have this year's fires been fierce and destructive, but the persistent smoke, especially the last two weeks, has ruined everyone's summer. That's especially true for the elderly, children, and people with respiratory problems. Certainly, Sealy Lake is uh, the most incredible and distressing thing I've ever seen. It's the worst we've ever seen in Missoula County. There have been multiple times when Sealy's air was not only hazardous, but beyond 1,000 micrograms, which have been unheard of. Cofield says the readings have actually outrun the monitors. Well, you know, there are monitors out there that can measure past uh, 1,000. We just don't happen to have one in Sealy Lake right now. So for as for monitoring ability, the, the ability exists. The bigger change caused by this year's smoke could come in how people are warned about the dangers of exposure. The current system only uses a one-day snapshot. It wasn't designed for weeks at a time. Right now, the current health messaging is based around a 24-hour exposure, and we have clearly surpassed uh, 24 hours of particulate exposure, and I think that there needs to be some readjusting in how we look at um, what we tell people who expect for health impacts and how to protect themselves. The other problem is it's hard to gauge exactly what the long-term health impacts will be, simply because we've never had a season like this, at least in modern times cumulative pollutant and the longer you're in it the worse it is and the more is going to affect you um, and right now we're still just using kind of based off of a 24-hour average idea uh, but it's it's not really uh, what we're seeing 
Even with all the smoke, Missoula itself still hasn't set a new 24-hour record for bad air this summer. There is some good news for Sealy Lake residents living near the Rice Ridge fire. The Missoula County Sheriff's Office reporting that after conferring with an incident management team, it's been decided to downgrade Zone 5 in Sealy Lake from an order to an evacuation warning. This last zone is the area north of the airport adjacent to Sealy Lake, but technically in Powell County. It affects about six homes. All of Sealy Lake is under an evacuation warning, while evacuation orders and warnings remain in effect for Powell County. At last check, the Rice Ridge fire had burned nearly 140,000 acres since it started by lightning north of Sealy Lake back on July 24th. There's a community meeting to talk about the Rice Ridge fire tonight at 6 at the Ovando Elementary School gym. Also, this morning, evacuation warnings were lifted for people living along Highway 12 between Bear Creek and Graves Creek near the Lolo Peak fire. It affects about 13 homes and is the last of the evacuation warnings on Highway 12. Elk Meadows Road and Lolo Peak Road, though, are still closed. The Highway 200 complex fires near Thompson Falls and Plains have grown now to more than 24,000 acres. Fire managers report, though, crews have been successful at burning unburned fuels between the line and main line uh, fire lines to create a back line, black line rather, and hold the fire lines and suppress any spot fires. The complex is comprised of the Sheet Gap, Deep Creek, Cub Creek, Miller Creek, and Reeder fires. Public meeting is scheduled for tonight at 7 to discuss those fires in the Thompson Falls Community Center. The Myers fire burning in both Granite and Ravalli County now stands at nearly 62,000 acres scorched. There are residences still at risk, including those in Moose Lake, Frog Pond, Billy Springer Memorial Park, and the Bonanza Lands area. Mandatory evacuation orders remain in place for the Moose Lake and Frog Pond areas, while an evacuation warning from Teepee Creek to Little East Fork in Ravalli County is also still in place. The Carp Creek drainage at the eastern part of the fire remains a high priority, with firefighters saying helicopters will continue to monitor the area and make water drops as needed to put out spot fires in that area. As the fires continue to burn in Montana, a number of made in Montana businesses are coming together to help raise much needed money to help firefighters and their efforts. Among them, Live Life Clothing in Helena. They've created two fire relief themed shirts and they're donating half their sales to the Stockman Banks Fund, which is going to match up to $10,000 in donations. Owner Sadie Floating says they started selling the shirts in early August. The response has been great so far from customers in Montana and across the country. It's been great. Um, you know, we've, we're really new. We've only been in business a little bit over a year, so we're not as big as some of the other companies. And so it's great to see the reaction um, on not only Montana, but we have customers from all around the United States who have been purchasing shirts. We've had wholesale stores contact us wanting the fire relief shirts to be a part of it. So the reaction has been amazing. It's been amazing to see our members stepping up, um, donating time, money, resources, creating products, um, really helping out in any way they can. It goes to show the authenticity not only of the products and the businesses, but of the character of our members as well. So we're really proud to see that. KPAX has partnered with the Montana Community Foundation to create the Montana Wildfire Relief Fund. It's your chance to help your fellow Montanans who are victims of these disastrous fires this summer. To donate, just go to kpax.com slash wildfire fund. You can make your contribution online or get information on how to mail it in. We're proud to announce that since we launched the fundraiser Monday, more than $36,000 has already been donated, which includes a $25,000 donation from the Montana Shirt Company in the Flathead Valley. So thank you very much. In other news, it looks like another Democrat is joining the race for Montana's lone house seat next year. Grant Keir of Missoula says he has scheduled an exciting announcement this evening related to Montana's only congressional seat. Keir is the former executive director of the Five Valleys Land Trust in Missoula, a group that works to preserve open space in western Montana. He stepped down from that post last month. If Keir is running for the Montana House seat, as we expect, he'd be the second Democrat to get in the race. He would join Billings lawyer John Heenan. The seat is held by Republican Greg Gianforti, who just won that office in the May 25th special election. He already has said he's running for re-election this year. Montana's 2018 U.S. Senate race has about a half dozen candidates or potential candidates. One of them says he's still exploring whether or not he'll run. But as MTN's Mike Dennison reports, State District Judge Russell Fagg of Billings sounds very much like he's in the race. Russell Fagg says he hasn't decided whether he'll become one of several Republicans hoping to challenge Democratic incumbent Senator John Tester next year. But he's been traveling the state, speaking to groups, and touting endorsements from prominent Republicans. And at this point, I've had tremendous encouragement. I picked up the support of Governor Roscoe, Governor Martz, Governor Stevens, Congressman Reberg, and Congressman Hill, should I decide to run, which really makes the decision a lot easier. 
but I'm not 100% there yet. The FAG is stepping down from his judge post on October 13th. After that, he says he'll announce whether he's a candidate. If he does, he'd be the fifth Republican to get into the race. Joining State Auditor Matt Rosendale, State Senator Al Oseski of Kalispell, and businessman Troy Downing of Big Sky and Ron Murray of Belgrade. The FAG formed an exploratory committee this summer. State Democrats have criticized FAG for running a shadow campaign while he's a sitting judge and suggest that's unethical. But FAG notes that the State Judicial Standards Commission reviewed his actions and found nothing wrong. That's perfectly ethical, legal, moral, it's right. It's okay to raise some money to travel to the state and talk to people, do some polling and some things like that. That's basically what I'm doing. He's also telling people why he'd be the best Republican to take on Tester. I'm a fourth generation Montanan. I've been a judge for 22 years. I've been in the Montana legislature. I'm center right. Uh, being from Yellowstone County is a huge help because there's a big portion of the votes here. So for all of those reasons, I think I would have the best shot of all the candidates should I decide to run against Senator Tester. But if Judge Fagg does decide to get into this contest, he'll still face a very competitive primary for the Republican nomination. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at how that race is already well underway. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Of course, the next primary election is still almost nine months away. Well, coming up, our first winter storm watch of the season did has you been read issued. That right? yeah, yes, you heard you that right. Erin has details on that and the major pattern change for the end of the week. And after a massive data breach at one of the major credit companies affecting nearly 150 million Americans, Equifax is now facing lawsuits. That's coming up on KPAX.